now let's install rust compiler on our machine so just type rust and go to the official website and go to install and download as per your machine so in this course i'll be using windows machine that is 64 bit so i would download and install this the download is completed now let me run this and let's see what happens i'll just go for run anyway let's use the option one proceed with the installation as you can see here it is installing many components like the standard library of rust the cargo package manager the documentations the compiler that is rust c now let's enter the installation is completed now let's open the command prompt just type cargo version and uh, you can see that this command must be executed successfully on your machine so if the installation is successful and it is showing the version now let's go to the next step open your terminal and create a new workspace now let me create one new workspace called let's say i call it as a rust project and let's get into that rust project here i will keep all my programs now let's create a new project and the project name will be hello world underscore zero zero one so just type cargo new and the project name i'll call hello world zero zero one that's it as you can see the cargo says it is created so now let's understand what is cargo it is the official package manager for rust there are similar package managers exist for other programming languages as well for example npn for javascript pip for python gem for ruby etc these package managers allow developers to easily manage dependencies and install packages and libraries for their projects the cargo allows you to manage dependencies compile and build your code and manage the distribution and publishing of your software so actually you have to go through the cargo documentation to understand its real power but for our time being let's just think that by using cargo you can build run your code you can also manage dependencies you can also manage uh, or you can also use it to create a library crates and publish that into the crates registry so many things can be done with cargo so we just used the new argument with the cargo to create a new project and uh, if you just do ls here and uh, get inside that new folder and you would see that it has created a folder called src and if you get inside that so you will see a main.rs let's open that main.rs let me open that with notepad plus plus and uh, here you can see that it has already included this code for us and if you want to open this new rust project in microsoft uh, visual studio code ide then what you can do is you just get inside the project and just type code space dot okay so of course the visual code studio should be installed okay before executing this command so as you can see the newly created uh, rust project is opened in visual code okay and here is our main.rs file all right what is main.rs main.rs is a source file that's a rust source file and this is called as binary crate in rust language managed by cargo binary crates are the executable crates which contain the main function that serves as the entry point for the program for the time being just note that what you have created is a main.rs is a rust source file and it is also called as binary crate because after building that you are going to get an executable or a binary file hence it is called as a binary crate and it also contains a main function and that is the entry point into your program which prints hello world using a rust macro called print ln with exclamation mark now let's quickly go through various components of this code first of all there is the fn keyword this is a standard keyword in rust which is used to declare functions this is the function name main 
and uh, after the function name always comes with parenthesis to mention the arguments currently there are no arguments so empty parenthesis after that a curly brace which marks the function body start and the function body ends here so the closing curly brace and about indentation it is actually not mandatory to give indentation like python in python for example the indentation is mandatory because it doesn't use uh, curly braces for uh, function start and functions end but as a good programming practice please maintain four spaces of indentation and for the indentation don't use tab instead of use four space characters so the settings you can do in text editors like notepad plus plus for example here if i go to settings preferences and uh, if i go to language here then i can set the tab size as four and if i check this replace by space then whenever i hit the tab key it will be replaced by four spaces and if you want to do the indentation settings in the vs code id then you can go to go here go to settings okay and in the settings just search for insert keyword okay here it is insert spaces so these are all uh, settings related to the indentation and uh, you can um, so it's already checked here which says insert spaces when pressing the tab key and you can uh, change the settings suppose if you go to let's say let's let's go to these settings okay editor tab size so you just search for tab size here so which is a setting and um, so here you can change how many space characters you want to be added whenever a tab key is pressed okay please do such settings in your id if it is not there by default so this is a code statement and in rust code statement must end with a semicolon remember that so this is mandatory so this is a rust macro which prints the string hello world to the console that is the standard output or terminal which is the standard output so this ends with an exclamation mark hence it is called as a macro in rust this macro is similar to the print function in other programming languages and it also adds a new line at the end now let's build and run our project so you can use the command cargo build let's do that so let's run let's build the project cargo build we can see that it is building our project and cargo run here it is if you go to the project source folder and here it is it has created a new folder called target so let's get inside that and here let's get inside the debug and here you see the exe file which is created okay so now let's see how to run this rust program from the vs code ide so in this course i'll be using both vs code ide as well as online rust compiler for most of the simple explanations and to execute some uh, small programs i'll be just using the online compiler but you can always use this beautiful ide uh, i'll definitely use this in this course and uh, now let's see how we can run this rust program in vs code ide okay so there are three ways actually the first one is you just open the terminal like you go to this option here and go to terminal and click on new terminal okay that will give you new terminal and you just get get inside the rust project and just you know run cargo commands like i'll just write cargo build that will build the project and cargo run okay or you can straight away run the cargo run command no problem okay and the second method is by uh you know by installing some extensions okay so click on this extensions option here and just search for code runner okay so basically this extension is used to run code snippet or source file for multiple lang languages including the rust programming language okay so is rust mentioned here um, okay okay here it is just install this 
yeah so now it is installed and activated now let's go back to the project as you can see now there is one run code icon has appeared here right you just click that and it will run the code right like that and another way is again go to extensions and when you are dealing with uh, rust programs then don't forget to install this uh, extension okay very useful extension that is rust analyzer right this one rust analyzer okay basically it gives rust language support for visual studio code it's a very helpful extension and you will appreciate um, the benefits of this extension as you write more code like you will get autocomplete suggestions and so many other features is provided by this extension or you can also install this extension rust okay so that would install all these uh, extensions like rust analyzer crates and rust syntax okay like that is used for uh, syntax highlighting first let's install this and now let's go back to the project so here i think it is still uh, doing some activity here the rust analyzer now as you can see uh, these options have appeared okay uh, on top of this uh, code snippet okay i can just click run over here so that would run the program so these are the several ways by which you can run your uh, rust program in the vs code ide and you can also use command cargo build hyphen hyphen release to create a release build so which doesn't make sense for the simple program this will optimize the program for performance and make it ready for distribution so we'll see all those things later all right so now let's look at some other flavors of println macro okay and uh, in the next lecture we'll also explore the very important uh, macro that is the format macro now let's explore different flavors of println so there are many macros available for the purpose of printing there is a similar macro available called print this is without ln extension that means it is also a macro and it doesn't add a new line at the end of the output this can be helpful if you want to print multiple things on the same line and the interesting macro is this one eprintln similar to println but it prints to the standard error stream instead of uh, the standard output stream this can be useful for printing error messages so actually by default the standard error stream and standard output stream both are the terminal output after that there is one more useful uh, macro called format this actually doesn't print a string but it creates a new string with a given format this can be useful when you want to create a string that includes multiple values or when you want to use more advanced formatting options so we'll see the example a little later and after that there is a write macro it is similar to format but it writes to the buffer rather than returning a new string so all these things you can explore going through the documentation and the exclamation mark at the end of the macro name indicates that it is a macro not a function and macros are part of the rust standard library all the above macros can be used to format output with placeholders these placeholders are denoted by these curly braces so we'll explore that now now let's see one example now let's execute this simple code snippet and let's understand how this works first let me create a new project cargo new print underscore zero zero two and let's get inside that so that opens this file in a notepad plus plus you can use any text editor of your choice no problem and i'm going to copy paste that code here it is so this code you can get from a repository i have given the repository link the exercise name is print underscore zero zero two this is very simple so this prints hello text without the new line character and here we have used eprintln which is used to send this string to the standard error device i have created a couple of variables here this is a variable to hold this string and this is another variable and here i have used the format macro as you can see this macro is being used to format this string using a couple of placeholders. These are placeholders. And these are the values 
so this placeholder will be replaced by the value of this variable and this placeholder will be replaced with the value of this variable so this is used to create a formatted string and that string will be returned and it will be saved in the message variable so such formatted string you can also use with print or print ln or eprint ln so it is not something specific to the format macro and after that i'm just printing this that's it now let's run this and let's see how the output looks like now let me come out of this here i have that project i'll just get inside that and cargo build and i'll just do cargo run after that the standard error or standard output stream can be redirected to a separate file using redirection operators such as this angle brackets you can use to uh, redirect uh, the messages to the separate file let's see how to do that for example in this code if i do cargo run and if i use this angle bracket and if i use um, output.txt so what this does is it redirects all the standard output messages to the out.txt as you can see now this terminal is considered as standard error device that's why it catches only the error messages so you can see that this contains all the standard output messages suppose if you want to redirect only the error messages then you can do cargo run to greater than symbol you can do something like error.txt and you can see that error messages redirected to this file you can see that so i hope you understood about this macro and after that let's see what's happening here as you can see format macro returns a formatted string so it returns a string that's why this is a string so you cannot print the value of the variable directly like you do in for example python you have to print with a placeholder so you cannot do something like this print ln you cannot just do message because this is a variable to print the value of the variable so you have to put a placeholder with additional text something like this is string something like this so you cannot just do this so i hope you understood this code and in the next lecture let's talk more about format macro and named placeholders i'll see you in the next lecture